In this video, join a discussion on ACV and RCV and how claims are paid, starting now. And speaking of insurance, this video is brought to you by Kaplik. You need insurance as an adjuster. Learn what you need for free at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Okay, let's boogie. All right, so let's talk about replacement costs and actual cash value. Um, these are sort of foundational um, concepts that every single possible claim you're ever going to do are going to deal with these in some way. Basics of them, and it's, there's not a whole lot to them, is that the replacement cost, the RCV, we call it RCV or replacement cost value versus the ACV, which is the actual cash value. Um, replacement cost is what it costs to do the work, right? Just using the current price list, right? So important thing to note, replacement cost isn't uh, what it costs to do the work at the time of the loss, right? Because it might be eight months later and they may have been um, settled up with for, you know, we'll just say that the RCV total before the deductible and depreciation, all that stuff, the grand total was 10K right to do whatever it was but then COVID hit and everything doubled right so somebody some other adjuster handled this and got them going and settled up for ten thousand bucks but in the course of um you know the, the contractor getting in there found a bunch more damage and it seemed like it was going to be the extent of that was a lot more um so they, they had to reopen the file for a supplement you reprice with the current price list First thing that you do, right? And you might be looking at this and you say, okay, well, it's a brand new claim. It happened nine months ago. Um, and I'm gonna do a reprice with the current price list and boom, it's $19,000, right? You haven't done anything yet, but this bumped up to 19 grand, right? That's, you have to do this, right? You, this is what you owe them. Um, if, if it turns out you can't add anything, anything to it and they already did the work for 10K, you're not going to give them 9,000 bucks. But then you start adding stuff to it and, you know, next thing you know, it's $35,000, right? The grand total for the whole thing out the door, right? Before anything else happens is 35,000 bucks, right? When I talk to the homeowner and I explain um, depreciation and all this kind of, or just explain the settlement, I say, okay, the grand total for everything that, that you know, we talked about, the roof, like the gutters and the downspouts, um, all the windows on the right side of the house over there, plus that siding, you know, this section of siding right here, the air conditioner, the whatever, right? $35,000, you know, when it's all said and done, 35 grand should be what it should be. The only thing that should come out of your pocket at any given time would be your deductible for a thousand bucks, whatever it is, and that goes to the contractor, right? But unless something changes, you find more damage, whatever, this is what the grand total should be. From there, that's when we start splitting things up, right? And we say, um, you know, we're applying a percentage of depreciation, blah, blah, blah. That's how we come up with the actual cash value. The actual cash value is the, a lot of different ways to describe this. I think one way that kind of makes sense to a lot of people is to say that this is the value of of the item as it is exists on the house right now, right? Based on its age and condition, right? Value, age, condition. Most of the time, you're just gonna go by age, right? So everything's gonna be average. You're not gonna sit there and like on every single claim be like, well, you know, I think this is, stuff looks like it's slightly above average or it's slightly below average or whatever. If it's falling apart, crumbling, um, then you might make an adjustment for below average. Um, if the roof is 25 years old and it looks like it's brand spanking new, I might make an adjustment for, you know, above average condition. But generally speaking, I want to do a straight line depreciation um, on age, right? It's 25 year shingle, we'll say, and it's 12 years old. That's 48%, it's about half, right? So when I'm talking to the homeowner, Say so grand total is, you know, 20,000 bucks. And, um, you know, when it's all said and done, that should be 
the grant total that we give you less your deductible, but but in order, the way we settle claims is that we have to pay you in two payments. We pay you an amount to get you started, and then once you have that work completed, we'll send you the rest of the money. The first payment is basically based on what you have on the house right now, right? So if you didn't do the work, we're paying you for the value of, of what's existing on the house right now, and we do it by kind of by a straight line, you know, the age, right? The, the age and condition, but the age mainly, right? So I'd say, you know, for example, right now you have a 25 year single on your roof. Um, you told me, because you're gonna ask, you told me that it's 12 years old. Um, so tw it's, you've used the, the roof has gone through about half of its useful lifespan. So we're gonna pay you about half to get you rolling, pay that, to go ahead and pay that to your contractor to get you started. Um, and uh, a lot of times the contractor is not gonna ask for a deposit. If they're, uh, you know, a lot of well-established companies will just say, hey, we'll just invoice you the whole thing at the end. Um, but then once you show us um, paperwork from the contractor saying that the work was completed, then we'll send you the other 52%, the other 50%, whatever it is. And then you pay the contractor and then you're all done. The only thing is you come out of your pocket, like I said, is your deductible, right? Which we'll talk about here in a second. But replacement costs and actual cash value um, are kind of like, you know, looped, linked together with depreciation, right? And depreciation, again, is just basically... Um, what's the value of the thing as it's as it exists on the house right now, based on its its useful lifespan, right? So in a lot of cases, um, things will have the useful lifespan in them, right? So 50 year shingle, 30 year shingle, um, or Xactimate has depreciation built depreciation tables, I guess you could say, built into it. So if you have like aluminum siding as a line item, you can put the age in and it'll calculate the depreciation based on what it's got as uh, the useful lifespan of that metal siding for that particular land. Sometimes the carrier will have a separate rule and say, um, for example, American Family used to, I don't know if they do it now, but they used to do this where they would say, okay, we know it's, it's a 25 year shingle, but if you're in the state of Texas, that is no way in God's green earth that a 25 years, any composition shingle is going to last 25 years. So we're going to say that the average useful or the useful lifespan of a 25 year shingle is going to be adjusted to 18 years, right? And then you got to use that number when you calculate your depreciation, right? And the, again, this is in your, be in your estimating guidelines for the insurance company. Uh, when you get deployed, they'll talk about it in your orientations, so on and so forth. If you don't follow this, if you if you just do 25 and you know this number here. And you didn't do 18 here. It's, final review should kick it back to you and say, "Hey, you got to use 18. You can't use 25." Okay. And if they see that you're doing that a bunch, um, you know, your manager might call you and be like, "Hey, listen, why are you why are you not listening to file review?" Learn how to apply and explain deductibles on hurricane claims in the next video, right here.